Welcome back to Mental Math. Here's a cubic equation that looks deceptively simple. We could test integer roots, but that's brute force. Instead, there's a beautiful algebraic trick hidden in the structure itself. First, we need to rearrange this into standard polynomial form. That's where any good factoring strategy begins. Starting with what we have. Let's move everything to one side by subtracting 12 from both sides. This gives us negative x cubed plus x squared minus 12 equals 0, arranged in descending order of power. It's conventional to have a positive leading coefficient, so we'll multiply everything by negative 1. Flipping every sign gives us standard form. x cubed minus x squared plus 12 equals 0. Now here's the key insight. We're going to decompose the constant term in a very deliberate way to reveal some hidden structure. Back to our standard form. Notice that 12 can be written as 8 plus 4. This isn't random. A 8 is 2 cubed and 4 is 2 squared, mirroring the powers we already have. So we can write this as x cubed minus x squared plus 8 plus 4 equals 0. Now we can rearrange these terms, grouping the cubic terms together and the quadratic terms together. We have x cubed plus 8 and then negative x squared plus 4. To reveal a difference of squares, let's factor out a negative from the second group. And now the structure reveals itself. A sum of cubes and a difference of squares. Notice the parallel structure. Both groups have matching powers with the number 2 x cubed with 2 cubed, x squared with 2 squared. This symmetry is the key. Now we can apply the standard factoring formulas to each group. The sum of cubes formula and the difference of squares formula. Let's write 8 as 2 cubed and 4 as 2 squared to match these formulas. The sum of cubes factors first. This becomes x plus 2 times x squared minus 2x plus 4. Now the difference of squares. Which factors as x minus 2 times x plus 2? Notice we have a common factor of x plus 2 appearing in both terms. That's the key. So we factor out x plus 2 from the entire expression. Now we simplify what's inside the brackets by distributing this negative giving us x squared minus 2x plus 4 minus x plus 2. Let's combine the like terms involving x. Negative 2x minus x gives us negative 3x. And combining the constants, 4 plus 2 is 6. And there's our final factored form, derived entirely through clever algebraic manipulation. Now we can extract all three roots by setting each factor equal to 0. We have two cases to consider. The first case gives us the real root. x equals negative 2. Let's verify this works by substituting back into the original equation. Negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 2 cubed is negative 8. 4 minus negative 8 equals 4 plus 8, which is 12. Perfect. For the second case, we use the quadratic formula. Simplifying step by step. 9 minus 24 gives us negative 15. The discriminant is negative 15. In the quadratic formula, a negative discriminant tells us there are no real solutions to this factor, only complex ones. We rewrite the square root of negative 15 as i times the square root of 15, where i is the imaginary unit. So we have our two complex roots. So this cubic has one real root and a pair of complex conjugates. The real solution, x equals negative 2. And the complex solutions, 3 halves plus or minus i times the square root of 15 over 2. Let's visualize this by graphing the original equation. Real roots show up as x-intercepts and the curve crosses the x-axis exactly once. 
Confirming our real solution at x equals negative 2. The two complex roots exist, but don't appear on this real coordinate plane. They would only be visible if we graphed the function in three-dimensional complex space. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this problem, give it a like and subscribe for more mental math challenges.